the Mazda Speed 3 is so damn good. The performance, the interior, the way it makes you feel, and the price. If you want to find out why we love this car so much, I've done a video on that. They'll be up in the top right hand corner if you want to watch it. But today we're going to be talking about why it is so underrated and no one really seems to appreciate it. Okay, so why don't people view this car as as good as it is? And why do so many people not even know about it? So first off, the drivetrain. It's front wheel drive, and even though front wheel drive can actually be funner than all wheel drive, you know, if done properly, because in this modern day, we've worked out how to have no understeer. And we've worked out how to have no torque steer, even though it's kind of fun. And to have a really fun, aggressive diff. But here's the thing, right? Even though front wheel drive can be fun, basically everyone apart from the hot hatch boys don't like and don't pay attention to front wheel drive cars. They just hear that it's front wheel drive and they write it off as being maybe good, but not great. You have a front wheel drive car, you're trying to drift. You're probably not a sporty guy. So, you have a front wheel drive car, you're probably not a sporty guy. But the next reason, okay, is it's very sleeper, isn't it? I ain't gotta get naked for no tennis bracelet, but I need 20 bands for it's a It's very unrecognizable. To most people, it just looks like a normal Mazda 3. So, just to point this out, right? Just right now, imagine that you've never ever heard about a WRX STI before. And you see this car driving down the road. It's got these gold wheels. It's got this big wing. It's got this big scoop. You know it's a serious performance car. And you want to find out what it is. Because that thing looks pretty damn serious. But let's say, right, you don't know about the Speed 3. And you get absolutely smoked by a Speed. It looks just like a normal Mazda 3. You might just assume that someone's put a turbo on the Mazda 3. Even if the Speed 3 owner tells you, mate, it's a Mazda Speed 3. It doesn't look like a seriously fast car, it just looks like a hatchback that's kind of quick, so it might be comparable to, you know, a Civic Si or something. Are you enjoying, boys? You wanna tap that like button for me? Mmm. I'm sorry for making that weird, it didn't have to be like that, did it? Next up, right, is the media and the reviewers, right? My dog probably passed down soon troll. That's just how it is. So, first of all, one thing. The main issue was extremely exaggerated. The torque steer, right? They claimed it would pull you off the road and into a hedge. Now tell me if you've driven one stock, you'll know that is far from the truth. But that's not the main thing about the media. The main thing is that 90% of the media look for an objectively good car. So they just look at criteria to decide, is this car good? So, you know, they don't want torque steer. They don't want turbo lag. So when the Speed 3 has these, it got slagged. The trash! It's the guy! It sucks! Because most of the reviewers, they look for things that they are told and learn are good and bad. But in reality, torque steer and lag is fun. Okay, just put it this way, right? You're in a standard hot hatch. You put your foot down and you go kind of quickly. That's about all that happens. But in a speed three, you feel the road through your hands, the mechanical shifter. You put your foot down, there's a bit of lag that creates suspense, that creates hype. Then the turbo comes in hard. It feels fast as frick. And as that turbo comes in, the wheel starts sharply tugging at you and it's your job there to manage keeping it going straight, getting all the power to the ground while going much faster. This torque steer and this lag, it stimulates all your senses. It wakes you up, it's fun. It cr this has got to sound really cringe, but it creates more of an emotional connection to the driver and the car. Hashtag marketing. But the media doesn't see it the way that drivers do. They know that it has lag and torque steer, so it equals bad. 
that's 90% of the media for you. Now, if you do want a good reviewer to watch, Savage Key, shout out him. His videos are so good and he understands cars on such a deep level. But should we sum this up right? A Golf GTI is an objectively amazing car, it does everything so well. But when you get to driving it enthusiastically, it's just boring. It just does everything with no fuss. But it's the right amount of power for what it is and nothing exciting happens. It's just a bit boring. But then let's go into yet another reason. This mostly applies to the Gen 1, right? It's rivals. My Miss Sarah's got a piercing in her nose, doing 140 in the VL Turbo. I don't like They just simply enough. weighed the car down. You know, people heard about some Mazda Speed 3 and it was a rival to the Focus ST and the GTI, which had like 200 and 220 horsepower. That's not good at all. They then think it's a lower class car when it has 260 horsepower, take into account drivetrain loss. That is about 235, 230 wheel horsepower, whereas, you know, an Evo with 280 crank, that's about 220, 230 wheel horsepower, so, you know, technically has more wheel horsepower than an Evo. And yeah, that's kind of, yeah, but you get the idea. But next up, it is rare. You're mad. I'm back, they mad, he's mad, she's mad, big sad. Just like the Speed 6, there's less owners, and there's less people to talk about them, and less people buying them. Their name just doesn't get spread easily when there's rarer. Unless, you know, they're an insane car like a Supra or a GTR, in which case you have to be a pretty mental car, hella fast and you're being fast and furious, and be overhyped. And that's not what the Speed 3 is. But let's just, let's just go to the next reason, right? So next up, it's not very aspirational. Yay! Take this home and home my ass. <clears throat> you know, one way to get respect as a car is to be aspirational. Look at the Nissan GTR, for example. People see it. Oh wow, it's a cool JDM car. It's amazingly fast. It's complicated. It's all-wheel drive. It's a sports car that can compete with supercars and can comparatively easily make a thousand horsepower. You know, this is the same with the Supras, the Evos, Nissan Z cars, BMW M cars, AMG cars. Not so much a front wheel drive hatchback that costs seven grand to bag quite a nice one. You know, most people just don't find that very memorable or special. This next reason's a bit deeper, it's the heritage, the nameplate of this performance car. I love Mick Reynolds. You're such a sucking fish. I suck so you know, the Mazda Speed 3 name has been around for about 13 years. Whereas, you know, an Evo and WRX have been around for 28, a Super has been around for 42, the Skyline nameplate, 63 years, and the Corvette, 67 years. When a car's name has been around for this long, it gives heritage, speciality, and just a legendary vibe to this car. Because you know, your dad tells you how legendary Evos were in his day on the rally stage. Or your granddad saying how astonishing Corvettes were back in his day. An older nameplate just adds history to the cars, it's more recognised and respected because of what it's done over its whole lifetime. Now, the Mazda Speed 3 term just isn't that old, no one really knows about it. And trust me, it's not just because, you know, Corvette's a Corvette or WRX is a WRX, even though WRXs aren't that special. STIs are cool, but WRXs are just WRXs. Because, you know, a Golf GTI, that is a worse car than the Speed 3, but it's been around for 45 years, and as you know, it's recognised way more than a Speed 3, even though it's worse. Same with a Civic SI, that's been around for 36 years, and a WRX has been around for 28. The Speed 3's only been around for 13. Time for Tubby Bye Bye! Time for Tubby Bye Bye! Bye Bye Tinky Winky! Oh my god, who the hell cares?